Hi, welcome back to the Real Estate Fairies channel. Today, we're gonna talk to you about how to sell your home for top dollar. So the first thing you're gonna wanna consider is your timeline. Are you going to move out before or after you put your home on the market? If you move out before you put your home on the market, the preparation for a vacant home is going to be different than the preparation for a home that you're still living in. So if your home is vacant, we're gonna talk about staging. If you're still living in your home, we're gonna talk about decluttering and depersonalizing. Right, so on that note, um, if you are not living in your house and your house is vacant, a really great way to sell it is to stage the home. We love staging. This is something we highly recommend. What is staging? It's when you hire a company or you can do it yourself and you put furniture in the vacant rooms. It doesn't have to be every room. If you have a house with four bedrooms, you can just stage the main bedroom, the kitchen, the living room area. It'll just give the buyer enough of a visual to see what the rooms look like. Also, the spaces look bigger when they are staged. So um, we highly recommend that you stage homes and it'll sell for more money and faster. Excellent. Another simple thing you can think about is lighting. Say it with me, guys. Light, Light it up. up. Yes, the more lighting, the better. And then there's also different types of lighting. So the first thing you wanna do is just scan your house. Look for light bulbs that might need to be replaced. Look for light switches that might not be working and make sure you get everything in functioning order. The next thing is to determine what type of lighting you want in each indiv individual room. For instance, in a kitchen and a bathroom, you might want something a little bit brighter. So that would be more like a, a cool lighting. And then in your bedrooms, um, maybe your rec room, I don't living know, area. living space, that's mm -hmm. a good idea. It's to get it a little bit warmer and more cozy, you're gonna go with like a warm lighting. So again, you can't do too much with lighting in my opinion, light it up. If you have windows, make sure the blinds are up so you let the yes. natural sunlight in as well. Yes, mm -hmm. natural light. So other things that you can do are some basic home improvements. Uh, like painting your walls. If you really love color and you have painted every single room in your house a bright, bold color, that may not be the most appealing thing to a buyer. A buyer really wants to come in and feel like a space is neutral so that they can create their own home. So we really recommend that if you have done, you know, big, bright uh, rooms, trims, accent wall, maybe toning it down a little bit using a white, gray, or beige paint to just neutralize the spaces. It'll make it easier for the buyer to make it their own personality. Other small things you can do are make sure that you're not missing any outlet covers, switch plates, um, maybe updating uh, doorknobs and cabinet pulls, just making sure everything is really crisp and clean and the buyer doesn't see a million small things that they have to do. So if you take care of all of the small upgrades beforehand, it'll be really easy for that buyer to come in and make it their home. The magic is in the details, for Absolutely. sure. Yes. We can yes. add some samples of like common, trendy, neutral colors mm -hmm. um, in 2022 that you can use. Excellent. Yeah. Here's another simple tip, declutter. Mm -hmm. Make sure your space isn't full of extra things that aren't needed because that makes it difficult, like Darcy and Adriana were saying, for a buyer to walk in and envision themselves living there. So when in doubt, take it out. Mm -hmm. Just fewer items strategically placed can do a lot to sell a home. Absolutely, and depersonalizing goes yes. along with that I'm as well. the same thing. Yep. Yeah, so that's removing a lot of family pictures, anything that might have your family's name or identity on it, you're gonna have a lot of strangers coming into your home that you don't know. So you wanna keep those personal things safe and safe, but also like if someone sees pictures of your family, it might be more difficult for them to picture their family. Yeah, absolutely, so. yes, completely agree with that. Yeah. So we've talked about things that you can do on the inside of your home. Let's talk about what you can do on the exterior. One of the things you want to take care of is the landscaping. And by that, I mean the carb appeal. So the first thing buyers see when they walk up to your house is literally your house, the front, the front yard. You wanna make sure it's you know clean, the grass is cut. Um, maybe if you have mulch, maybe buy a fresh bag of mulch to put on there. It kind of makes it look fresh. Make sure there are no weeds. Gutters too, that's really, really important. So if your gutters are dirty, it's just gonna give off this dirty vibe. Like you don't take care of your house, so what are they ex to expect on the inside? More dirty, unkept house. Believe it or not, I see a lot of that. The gutters mm -hmm. that are like, things are growing out of it. And oh it's just God. not a good like way a to walk in. Like a forest on your gutter, don't do that. Just clean them. 
<laughs> or hire someone, it's just so easy to do. The last thing you wanna take care of if you have pets is to make sure your backyard and front yard have no dog poop. Please pick up after your pet. And they both have dogs, so they totally <laughs> we know. support. We are responsible pet owners and we support picking up after your pet. We can, <laughs> we can spot a nasty pet owner when we see one. Don't be that nasty mm -hmm. pet, pet owner. <laughs> yeah, Don't be nasty. <laughs> Don't be nasty. Okay, another simple thing when you're checking out the exterior of your home is the actual exterior, whether it's siding or brick or stucco. You wanna take a look at that and maybe pressure wash. It's something simple you can do. It's relatively inexpensive to hire someone to do the pressure washing for you. Or like I know within like the first year of owning my home, um, we purchased our own pressure washer. Uh, it's like I said, pretty inexpensive. I wanna say it was like $200 somewhere around there. Um, but it, it spruces up the whole neighborhood. Our HOA actually requires that we do that. And I think that's a great thing because it keeps the whole neighborhood yeah, looking nice. nice and sharp and clean. So it's a good thing to do. And you can also do your sidewalks and the driveways, and especially mm -hmm. like we have concrete, um, it can really brighten it, brighten it up a little bit and it just gives you that nice curb appeal. Right, absolutely. The last thing you wanna do is to make sure that your house numbers are visible, whether they're actually on the house or whether they're on the mailbox, you need to make sure that you can see them from the street because there have been instances where people have rolled up to the wrong house and shown a house that is not the one on the market on accident. That's a tick, that's something that's going on on TikTok right now, uh, <laughs> is that people have showed the wrong house on accident. So just make sure that the house numbers are easy to read, easy to find, so that when the agent and the buyers show up to show your house, they know that they're at the right house. I have to say that's actually happened to me. It was a little um, condo community um, and the, it was, both units were for sale. They were in different sections, nothing was labeled. They both had for sale signs in the window. It was the same selling agent. Ugh. So I really was convinced, I was like, this has to be it because it has the, you know, it's vacant, it's this, checked it off. And it was in pretty bad condition, mm -hmm. which, so we were like, hmm, this doesn't add up with the pictures we saw, but okay, come to find out. We needed to go back and see a whole oh, different no. unit, so oh, it just goodness. wasn't a good experience. Yeah, you're right, especially with condos. Yep. Like, that would be an easier mm -hmm. like mix up. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Homes, yes. yes. And mailboxes. If the, your house number is on your mailbox, which it usually should be, so that the the mail carrier can find your house, make sure that your mailbox is clean and straight. And if that's something that you need to pressure wash as well, just clean off the post. Um, make sure that. Nobody's gonna run it over with their car. If you need to add a little reflector maybe so that it's visible, just make sure that your mailbox looks neat because that's another thing that can really increase your curb appeal. First impressions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll admit mine is... <laughs> Did you run over your mailbox? No, it just, when we <laughs> bought it, it was like that and then oh. we never fixed it, which is awful. It's lazy. Oh. No, it's called being busy. We get it. Yeah. But, but if you're gonna you sell your house. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> as I was just yeah. about to say, it when you're selling tougher. your house, just make sure that all of the little details are straight and clean and pristine and you will have a very happy buyer. Ta-da! The magic is in the details. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've talked about the simpler things that you can do with the interior and exterior of your home in preparation for selling, but now let's talk about what if you need a larger scale renovation. So you have to be careful with where you spend your money, right? Because we all work very hard for the money that we make. So in other words, you wanna be careful about which room you choose. Say for instance, you've got an outdated kitchen but you really want a movie theater in your basement. Don't spend thousands of dollars putting a movie theater in your basement if your kitchen's out of date because you're gonna get more uh, bang for your buck by doing the kitchens and bathrooms than say a bedroom or a movie theater. So you don't always get a dollar for dollar return on your investment also. So keep in mind that you don't wanna spend $50,000 renovating your kitchen if the comparables in the area are only giving you say $10,000 added onto your asking price. So just have to be very smart about how you spend your money. Yeah, and on that note, um, when you're choosing to do a larger renovation, let's say it is your kitchen or your bathrooms, try and play it safe, meaning go for neutrals. It's always more appealing to buyers if the colors are neutrals, because like we said earlier, they can picture themselves or add their own personal touches to a blank canvas. Another thing that you can do is to consider doing a pre-listing home inspection. So this will allow you to learn about any 
possible problems in your home that a home inspector would discover when the buyer comes in during their due diligence period to inspect. So things like maybe the age of the HVAC, maybe there's a roof leak you didn't know about. Getting these things fixed ahead of time and including them on your seller's property disclosure will give you, um, will make you look really good to the buyers and give you a little bit of a leg up when it comes to listing. Because if you can say, we know that there is X, Y, and Z wrong with this home, you know, we will either give you a credit towards your closing costs or be prepared for when the buyer asks for those things. Or price it accordingly. I was gonna say, or you could price say it it's already factored into the price. And also as a buyer or as representing buyers, it is nice to know that the seller has done the home inspection because you're walking into it knowing all of the right issues, flaws. possible issues or flaws, exactly. Yeah. In our market, a home inspection costs anywhere from 350 for a cheap home inspector up to 700 for a really good one. So, you know, just factor that cost into- Talk to your agent too about yeah. what- And if you need any recommendations, inspector. we can put them below. Okay. Yeah, we all have preferred um, home inspectors. So ask your agent and they probably do as well. And I know a lot of this can be overwhelming because we've talked about like interior things, exterior things, some major renovations, and sometimes that can be overwhelming. Right, yeah, so you don't have to do all of them. Um, just maybe pick a few that you can easily tackle, like whether it be painting or maybe it's staging or maybe it's the light fixtures, just something, um, decluttering, whatever you can. Um, on that same note, some of these things do cost money and nobody wants to pay money up front to sell their house. So we have this really nice program at Coval Banker Realty called Real Vitalize, which in a nutshell is basically we at Coval Banker will loan you the money to do these types of um, renovations or basically to prep your house for selling. So you could use that money towards staging, you could use it towards painting, towards landscaping, decluttering, and then we, um, and then you will just pay us back at closing. There's no fee, um, no interest, nothing. It's just clean and simple. We lend you the money so you can make the house more sellable. Um, so yeah, just ask us questions. If you have any below, we will include the link to, to Real Vitalize. If you're working with another agent from another broker, they might have a similar program mm -hmm. that we just don't know about. We all are fans of Real Vitalize. So. Exactly. And if you have questions about anything that we've talked about today, we encourage you to leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get back with you and connect with you. And other than that, give us a like and a subscribe, and we will see you next time.